So I suppose you've seen just from the quick little video, and today I'm about to show the builder a mini DUI uh, patio ponds, patio ponds, mini ponds, whatever you like to call it. I'm going to call it patio slash mini, even though it's not a patio, but you know, mini pond, whatever you like to call it. Uh, so the would cost you to, the, if you're going to build the exact same way as mine. It's going to cost you 50 quid altogether with a filtration system. A pump uh, and three pound pots and a bag of gravel. That's all you need for this simple little build to build this patio pond or mini pond. It's completely easy to do, and I'm about to show you how to build it now today. So see you in a bit. See you in a bit. Yeah. All right, the things I do have is the pump. Uh, holds or line for the pump, bag gravel, the actual pond base I'm going to be using myself which is a pound pot um, which is meant to look like a barrel. You can use a barrel but then the problem with barrels is you want to kind of use a liner in or something to act like the liner. Um, which the barrels which I've seen from my local B&M shop were going to cost me 20 quid uh, and this was what this plastic one was only 30 so that so they say Probably would end up costing me another five or so for a bit of liner for like an actual pond liner, but it saves me the ass of cutting and the rest of it. I spent an extra five quid and actually just bought a plastic one. Now I bought two uh, smaller plant parts, and this is what so I also got two, which one is gonna act as a Hold up stand. One's gonna act like a stand for the other one. So as this top one is gonna be full of gravel, uh, gravel plants. It's gonna act like a mini B, uh, a mini DUI bog filter for this pond completely. I'm not even gonna bother cutting any holes in this. I'm literally just gonna run the pump up to it, pump pumps down to the bottom, uh, and then it's just pretty much simple. I can add a way to like a rack mount to the bog. Or a place where a lot of dirt gets picked up too. So I every now and again I just got a rack mount, whatever. Uh, and this is gonna be essentially the pond. So I'm gonna push that back a little bit because I feel like I want more space around the front than I do actually on the back. So pretty much a simple design. But yeah, that's pretty much the idea. Uh so for a minute, gonna get the bag. Gonna give the gravel open. So now that I'm washing the gravel up, this year just shoving the oils in the bag, uh, shake me oils around. Got to stop a lot of the dirt. Uh, we'll do this for about another five, ten minutes or so. Make sure it's crystal as it can be before we end up using it. Because trust in this, we end up using it, and it's not gonna work out. Right. Oh, the other thing is when you're choosing gravel from your local DIY shop, then make sure it's fish friendly. Um, if you don't know if it's fish friendly, probably best bet is not to buy it. If it doesn't say fish friendly, or go in and ask someone if it is fish friendly. If they don't know, then I definitely don't recommend to buy it. Uh, if it says fish friendly, then happy days. Then you know it's going to be absolutely fine. Which I know this gravel is going to be fine because I bought it before in the past for this pond and some other ponds uh, in the past. Like today we're using it for this pond. But, uh, gonna leave our run. That's in time trying to figure out my idea. Uh, but yeah. Alright, so I decided to go with both clay parts in the end. Uh, I just quickly patched the yaw off on the bottom. This still is like a slight leak but it's not gonna you know, it's not going out the pond, it's going back into the pond, so just make sure the pond is not going to be overflow uh, massively. But, um, so if the water does go off, if the electric does go off for some other reason, the water's not going to go back in the pond, which is the, you know, just make sure the electric does go off. So I've also built now my little DOI bog pipe. So what we got is on the top is a 
where the water's going to get pumped in from the top and then you breathe a pipe so if the electric does go off then you know it's not gonna actually that's not even much pumping in my shell but I'm not gonna pass the case ah uh, but yeah I believe it but yeah we'll just go from here now grab her around it and it's just that I'm the gravel right now so it's pretty much clean to a point we hopefully once on stop firm up it's not gonna affect it too much um, that's just kind of open prey type of nail. Um, but yeah, we'll just go from there. I think. It's like I'm being around the fishing today, and I just want to get it set up today, let it run a couple of days, and then then add the fishing once the fishing are nice and settled. This nut here, you know, it's just poking out from the gravel. We're not too far off. Yeah, it's just kind of a nice little simple pond. Probably one of my last videos of the year. Actually, no, I say that. I got a idea in my head which I'm doing for that so the rock or the gravel is going to act like the media essentially uh, far far the pond I uh, thought the yeah media far the, the little deer by pond that was not that was not doing so well but obviously it'll do for this year I mean like this one then I got completely empty out the um Soil, as we don't want the soil in the bog, so I'm going to do that quickly. I'm not going to show that on camera, uh, just because there's no point, but yeah. So, I was sitting now in the pan pot, in the pan pot, in the bog filter, and now we have gravel all the way around the ponds, or around the tubs anyway. This actually just look up like already. Can't wait to get a foot of water, get the pump running. And see how it sounds. So it has been two days now since the party upon is been up and running. I bought some oxygenated plants as well to go in there, uh, which got like four bushes in there. Uh, well, four plants in there at the moment, which we get more at some point later on the line. And today we're going to be adding the fry into that pond. Um, obviously, the second part of this video for you guys is all on one day, but for me it's been two days since. That's been set up. So right now it's gonna catch the fry, put a little tub, let them acclimate, and uh, let them go loose. So now as they're floating, I'll leave them in there for about 10, 15 minutes or so. Same again with the guppy and party fly in the, the proper tank. One, just let them get used to the temperature. Uh, get them to use the temperature difference. Now, the main reason why you guys might be asking why am I bringing these guys out here into this patio pond is, is essentially is to get them used to, to the different types of weather between the coldness, the warm uh, and obviously the winter as right now we just got towards the end of the summer it's just the start of the s s September uh, so I want to get these guys pretty much winter hardy this year because I don't know if they can survive this size winter hardy once they are fully grown like the rest of the fancies are in this pond I know they're going to be thriving every single winter. So this is the reason to me why it kind of is more important to do it now. Instead of just waiting another year or another two years uh, for them. Like some of these guys are at decent size and obviously I'm doing my best as I can to make sure this pond doesn't completely freeze over. Same again with the filtration. Uh, you know. Like I do with my other two ponds, I always make sure there's always somewhat water movement in the pond. Uh, to stop it from freezing over. As well as I think that once this pond starts growing algae properly and insects come towards the pond, these guys are get, get so much better at a diet than I could ever do inside of a fish tank and naturally for them. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of all the main reasons why I want to get them out, you know. But yeah, we're going to let these guys float, then we'll let them loose, 
uh, and then I'll give it about a day or two, give you guys a quick update for this video goes live. Um, you know, they sell them tips now. Okay. Right, so now it's been about 10 minutes. So I'm gonna let these fly, go to the new home. Until they fully grown. Which then they'll be added into the big tank, or even some of them might end up selling. Oh, they say big tank, I mean, they say the fancy pond. But it's time to let them loose. And let them explore. Jeremy is going to see how oh, well they're going to do in you. Even though I said that, I did end up finding free fry in this box on a plot pot. So, you know, three of them already been outside for a long period of time before they come in. But yeah, that's just a uh, let them get settled in. Give you guys a quick little update in a couple of days. And uh, we'll go from there. Right, now it's been a couple of days now, actually it's just been a couple of days. It's been close enough to a week now since the fry have been in you. Um, they're still a little bit skittish when we come close to the pond, so I might not even see them. But obviously I'm just going to, you know, bring them out some breakfast. So hopefully we might get catch one or two of them. At least the bigger ones anyway. No, you have to see that too, Tim. Ah, uh, he's one of the fry. I think after some of the bigger fry, you probably just see more, probably the small fry. But they do turn like the five around the back. Yeah, they're doing alright, isn't he? Oh, there's one. There's one. Not like that, there's Timmy! Timmy! There he is. Yeah, so they're all in here, because obviously they're quite small. I won't even see them on camera. Um, now I've got to turn the pump off and actually have the pump lock, but obviously I don't do an extra so I won't stress them. Uh, but they're all you need to do alright. So my idea is to just to keep them in there all winter, feed them up now. Uh, but yeah, they're doing alright. So that's how I'll build a chip the 